From Bangladesh to Boston, Mass., the jihad is everywhere the same. The jihadi strives to please Allah by leaving you dead or lame. David Wood shines light on their misdeeds. He's here, and that's why he came. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome yet again to This Week in Jihad. David, have you noticed how many times when the revelation comes upon me, it mentions you? Yeah, that's weird. It is. It is. I think that it's kind of like uh, Caliph Umar when he was saying that uh, Muhammad was mad at him and he was really afraid that a passage of the Quran was going to be revealed about him. But he got, he, he got off that time. Yep, got off, got off easy there. Yes, indeed. Hey, hey, how many, how many passages of the Quran do you think would have been revealed about us if we'd have been hanging around uh, Mecca and Medina at that time? <laughs> oh, they would, they would have to add more chapters. There would have been <laughs> a, a the Quran. Note. The Quran has seven thousand chapters. <laughs> 98% of it cursing Robert Spencer and David Wood. A tame goat ate them, David. Uh, anyway, um, I believe there's some jihad. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I was about to say, no, I haven't. No, it, it's, it's impossible because I haven't heard any, but even I've heard of some. So, yeah. Oops. You know, I just was going to the story. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, anyway, David, actually, this is... Not strictly speaking jihad, but it's Sharia, and it is uh, obviously, as we all know, all interconnected, because if you're Sharia adherent, you're going to be somebody who thinks jihad is something great to uh, pursue. Anyway, did you hear about the great breast milk controversy in Pakistan? I did not, sir. Well, I thought, seems... I, thought, I thought you were going with KFC Canada, going uh, full halal. But you went in a completely different direction with the Sharia compliance. But go ahead. Well, we can do KFC Canada uh, as well. But uh, breast milk first, then chicken. Now, spoken as... like a true prophet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what happened was a hospital in Karachi was setting up a milk bank for babies. And this was something that was designed to uh, help babies who were premature, babies whose mothers were uh, uh, ill in some way, maybe not lactating in any case, uh, designed to save lives, in other words. And uh, they knew that this was a hot button issue in terms of Islamic law. And so they checked the, the Karachi uh, breast milk company, uh, they checked. They said, we've been working on the bank for a year, said Dr. Jamal Raza, the executive director of the Sind Institute of Child Health and Neon, Neonatology. Neonatology. Uh, and anyway, uh, he says, we had been in intense discussions with the religious clerics from Jamia Dar ul Alum Karachi for the last eight months. The scholars had raised several concerns, all of which were addressed, and they got the go-ahead for the breast milk bank. Yes, indeed. But then, after the thing was inaugurated, just on June 12th, last week, the uh, Dar J Jamia Dar al Karachi withdrew its fatwa of assent, and the place had to close. Hafiz Muhammad Tahir Mahmoud Ashrafi chair of the Pakistan Ulema Council, he said, the objectors of the objective of the doctors who want the objective of the doctors who wanted to set up the human milk bank may be in good faith, but we concur with Jamia Darul Alum Karachi and do not think it needs to be encouraged. And he said uh, that the problem, of course, is that you got all these different sources mm -hmm. for the milk and they're gonna yeah. be combined. Not only mm. that, and then they said, okay, we won't do that. We'll keep track of who they come from. But also they had to keep track of who they went to. Mm -hmm. And everybody who they went to would then be, have to li be listed as the foster child mm -hmm. of the donor. And the yeah, whole thing that's, what I was thinking, that's what I was thinking. The, that's what I was thinking the entire time you were telling the story. Is like, uh, given their rules, 
this is not going to work out because everyone's going to end up being related to everyone else through through fosterage. Hey, if if uh, if anyone out there doesn't know what we're talking about in Islam, if a woman uh, breastfeed, if 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 my mother were to breastfeed some other guy, or he were to drink her breast milk for some reason or something like that, then we're uh, we're like foster brothers or something like that. If it was a if it was a a girl who was breastfed by my mother, then that girl is now off limits to me because we're kind of brothers and sisters through uh, through fosterage. And so uh, you've heard people, you've heard us talk about stuff before, probably when it comes to the missing Quran verses that were about breastfeeding adults because Muhammad actually used this as a solution to a problem in society. Let's suppose you're a man, you have to go away on business, you have to leave your wife at home, but there's a guy who works in your house. There's a guy who works in your house, or maybe your wife has to be around some guy uh, in some place or something like that. You're worried about them uh, committing adultery while you're gone. So what do you do? This issue was brought before Muhammad. Muhammad, how do I make sure my wife is faithful to me with this guy, this young stutter that works in our house? Uh, How do I know she's going to be faithful while I'm gone? Muhammad said, don't worry, I'll ask the great God Allah, who revealed, uh, just have your wife breastfeed this young stud ten times, and then he'll, uh, he'll, he'll be her, her foster son, and there, there won't be any sexual attraction between them. So if you want to do away with the sexual attraction between a man and a woman, just have her repeatedly stick her big round breasts right in his mouth. And then there won't be any sexual attraction. Then you know you're safe. You know your wife is totally safe. They won't. There won't be any temptation. And so, uh, funny story. Funny story. This was eventually abrogated from ten to five, and they were both in the Quran. And then, when Muhammad died, it's Sunan Ibn Majah, 1944. Don't take my word for it. But Muhammad died, and the story that Aisha told was while while everyone was preparing his burial. Oops, I had the only copy of these verses about breastfeeding adults, and uh, uh, my sheep came in and ate it. Oopsie. Classic dog Don't. ate my homework. Do away with an inconvenient revelation excuse. Good job, Aisha. Yeah. She, she really, uh, she did a great service, really, to Muslim women in that regard. Yeah, can, yeah I mean, can, seriously, can you imagine that? If Muhammad's wives hadn't conspired to remove that stuff from the Quran... Uh, it, it's occasionally an issue. You remember it came up like uh, 15 years ago or so in Egypt when mm-hmm. a cleric was saying, hey, guys, this is still a rule. If your wife has to go work at Radio Shack and there's a guy who works there, she needs to breastfeed him. And everyone jumped all over him. What are you talking about? We don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, because you don't remember it anymore. But if Muhammad's wives hadn't conspired to remove that from the Quran, this would still be an ongoing thing. And Daiz would be defending it just as forcefully as they defend having sex with prepubescent girls. It would be, it would just be all over the place. Um, yeah, so fortunately they took that out, but it is still an issue. It is still an issue, as you just pointed out. A place like Pakistan, they want to have a breast milk bank, but every every child, every child who gets some of this, uh, some of this milk from various mothers and so on is now, is now off limits as a future, as a future partner of any of the uh, offspring of, any of those women and so how do you you have to like it seems like a lot of work to keep track of who is now related to who the crazy part is isn't that like the cousin marriage capital of the world and all of a sudden they're they're worried about fosterage where you're not actually biologically related you're not actually doing any you're not actually causing any birth defects by having these close relations so hey let's do away with the imaginary i mean no let's do away with the actual biological Wait, what are they doing? Wait, we want the actual biological relationships that cause birth defects. Let's just make sure we don't have the imaginary relationships that don't cause birth defects. That's the one we're concerned about because that's the one that Islam actually uh, forbids. It's just all the same, all this craziness all the time. And I should note also in that connection that one of the reasons why this is still a controversy, you're quite right that because it's not in the Quran, you don't get... uh, people saying it very often and there was the big controversy in Egypt when they did say it a few years ago and people were saying this is crazy we got to rein in these crazy imams with their insane fatwas but the crazy imams with their fatwas are not coming from nowhere this is Mm -hmm. still in Sahih Muslim 
which is, of course, an extremely highly regarded Hadith collection. And it's got uh, Aisha reported that Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hadhaifa, lived with him and his family in their house. She, uh, the daughter of Suhail, came to Allah's apostle and said, Salim has attained puberty as men attain, and he understands what they understand, and he enters our house freely. I, however, perceive that something rankles in the heart of Abu Hudaifa. In other words, he had the hots for her. Whereupon Allah's apostle said to her, Suckle him, and you would become unlawful for him. And the rankling which Abu Hudaifa feels in his heart will disappear. She returned and said, So I suckled him, and what was there in the heart of Abu Hudaifa disappeared. And so there are many Muslim clerics who say this is the way to prevent immorality, breastfeeding. Yeah, and think about how hilarious this is. He's saying, "Hey, you know, if you breastfeed him, then you know he'll be for he'll be for forbidden to you. It'll be unlawful for you to guys to do anything." Well, it was already unlawful. She's married, so if you're if you were worried if you were thinking they were going to commit adultery, then they obviously don't care if they're breaking the rules here. And so, oh, you're just we're gonna we're gonna add the we're gonna put your we're gonna put your breasts <laughs> in his mouth, and then and then suddenly law will become very important to this guy after sucking on your your big round breast there for a little while. Yeah, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe he can, maybe he can lay with you at night, and you could cuddle him like a baby, and so on, and then, and then everything will be fine. This then, is stupid. By the, by the way, there are a bunch of those hadiths, and like, there's, there's an especially creepy one where, where the woman goes, he, he says, he says, breastfeed him. He says, breastfeed him, and she goes, but he has a beard. And Muhammad, it says, Muhammad, Muhammad said, I know he has a beard, and smiled. So imagine how creepy <laughs> this is. Like, I know he has a beard. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to be sitting in the chair in the corner watching all of this. <laughs> what a creep, man. It's going to be a great movie, the biopic. Uh, all right, so let's go to Chicken. Uh, speaking of breasts, Chicken. Uh, no, yeah. you're, back to your, you're back to your awesome transition. <laughs> KFC Canada, yes, ladies and gentlemen. They sent out a letter that came to light uh, quite recently. Uh, says here, we are excited, we excited to inform you that effective May 15th, and so now this has been, what, two months now, uh, KFC Canada will be launching halal certified chicken across KFC Woo. restaurants in Ontario. Uh, this initiative is a testament to our commitment to providing diverse and inclusive menu options for all our customers. And to be diverse and inclusive, David, they say that they are insu they assured all chicken products are halal certified and discontinued pork products at all KFC locations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're more diverse by offering less. Yeah, and uh, they're more diverse by having everything done according to the uh, ramblings of an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber. Everything has to be done uh his way so what what's that burger king have it your way no it uh yep. at, at kfc now it's uh have it muhammad's way or That's and there it. is no other way it's all it's all one way so now guys you know uh to, to be halal it has to be slaughtered by a muslim who pronounces uh who pronounces the uh, bismillah uh name of allah over the chicken as he's killing it and so on so um yep that's definitely increasing the div diversity everything has to be exactly one way in accordance with sharia sharia because that's uh you know that's just a fount of diversity robert indeed it's interesting to note that this push for diversity ends up being incredibly monochromatic and of mm -hmm. course this is because the one group the muslims uh or at least islam in its classic form is completely supremacist and unyielding and so it doesn't really have any room for diversity at all once you allow for it everything else has to go yeah and i don't want to give any spoilers but uh we may have recorded muhammad meets queers for palestine um as i'm as i'm getting the boom boom room uh, started back up here again uh robert you'll be making uh, some appearances because uh, i've got several that i've recorded and just uh, haven't released yet but we recorded a Muhammad meets queers for Palestine, and that that video, that episode may or may not have been sponsored by KFC Canada, and 
And the things that, that may come up in, in reference to KFC Canada are the finger licking good part because Muhammad uh, told his followers to suck on each other's fingers. And uh, of course, the queers comparing queers for Palestine to chickens for KFC. Those may or may not have, have come up in the discussion, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, those are going to be a must watch. Uh, all right. Uh, I actually have, I think, a coherent organization, oddly enough, this week. And so, I don't believe it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll test it out. Uh, test the theory. We're going to start, David, on the jihad portion of our proceedings, the strictly speaking jihad portion, uh, with Africa. And real, real. then the idea here is to compare and contrast Africa and the conditions there with Europe and the conditions there. Just in any given week, this is just an ordinary week in an ordinary year. And so we start with Somalia and the top coffee cafe in Mogadishu and there was a big crowd in the top coffee cafe in Mogadishu there to watch the uh, watch the football game the soccer game and yeah, I'm glad you corrected yourself Robert yes the soccer game not real football <laughs> the uh, uh, jihadis went in they blew it the place up nine people were killed and 20 injured as a car bomb exploded in front of the cafe. It was the work of Al-Shabaab, the jihad group there, that is tied to Al-Qaeda. And so uh, that's one place in Africa, the usual thing. In Nigeria, of course, we have news. Uh, what, yes? one, 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 one second, though. Uh, I just want to point out, um, it's, it's this came up years ago, but uh, there's... Um, there's a Christian couple that uh, that's from Somalia and they do shows and so on. And they pointed out that like Somalia has everything it needs to be like a, uh, an awesome, an awesome place in, in Africa. It's got, it's got the, re it's got the resources and so on that it needs to be uh, a great place. And yet it's one of the worst places on the planet. You ask why? And it's all jihad. It's jihad. Jihad is what, that's just what a jihad does. It just goes to places and, and destroys them and gives people the the alternative wants to leave everyone with the alternative sharia or chaos sharia or complete chaos and no stability and just nothing but death and destruction because they know that's the only time people would choose sharia mm -hmm. okay sure okay it's sharia some kind of order some sort of authority or endless chaos and death Okay, we reluctantly accept. They know if you have a if you have the alternative of Sharia versus any other system in the world, people will choose the other system, and so the jihadis have to constantly just just complete just destroy everything, burn everything down to nothing until people decide to uh, do what we want. And uh, yeah, so they take uh, they take places that could be great places and make them the worst places in the world. Great job, Mohammed. Another place like that is Gaza, because Gaza it has a beautiful climate. Beautiful beaches could be an international resort area like the French Riviera. And instead, they devoted all their resources and the billions and billions of dollars they receive in humanitarian aid from the United States, from the European Union, from everybody. And uh, they just devoted it all to jihad. And, and so, tunnels. And tunnels. Tunnels. Billions of dollars worth of tunnels there. Great job, guys. Yeah. Could have built an efficient subway system, but... Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, in Nigeria, meanwhile, we had in uh, Plateau State, jihadis went to 70 churches, 70, 7 and closed them down this past week. And I think that that's important to keep in mind in terms of things we've discussed before, such as the uh, Babri Mosque, Ram Mandir controversy in India, the uh, Temple Mount, of course, where you have not one but two mosques built on the site of the Jewish temple, the ancient temple in Jerusalem, the uh, Hagia Sophia, the grandest church in the Christian world for nearly a thousand years, <clears throat> becoming a mosque, many other churches, the Church of St. John the Baptist in Damascus, and so on. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if on the sites of these 70 churches in Nigeria, there will soon be mosques. What do you think? Yeah, when that happens, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, uh, worst case scenario, we will, uh, we will point out the hypocrisy. 
because this is what we see over and over and over again. Uh, Muslims will cheer when they take a church and convert it into a mosque and they think it's great. And then they whine like little babies when uh, someone takes uh, a place that ever had a mosque on it and turns it into anything else. And they whine like babies. There's no there's no concept of consistency. And you wonder people may wonder why it's built into the religion um, when Muhammad left Mecca and went to Medina. What are, what are the revelations he's getting in the Quran? Whining about how intolerant the pagans are because they won't let them take the pilgrimage anymore. Oh, look at these intolerant pagans. They're so, they're so mean. They're so evil. They're so wicked. They're so intolerant and Islamophobic. They won't allow us to take the pilgrimage. Then Muhammad takes it over. No one's allowed to take the pilgrimage anymore except us. And it's like, they, they don't get it. They, there's no, they, yeah, no concept of consistency at all. And certainly no reciprocity between the best of people on earth, as the Quran calls Muslims, and the most vile of created beings, as the Quran calls non-Muslims. So if you have such a disparate group of people, then you have no need to treat them in an even-handed way. All right, in Algeria, same thing, David. 43 out of 47 Protestant churches closed. Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, warned that if they proselytize, they will be liable to prosecution. So that's Algeria and Nigeria, churches being closed, Christians being persecuted. And then we go to France. And what do you think we see in France, David? Uh, jihad. You are correct, sir. This is, let me get it here. I know I have it. Thought I did. Why is it that I put these things in here and then they're gone? Because you're bragging about how organized you are. You know? <laughs> See, that's it. It's pride. It's You jinxed yourself. That's it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, there's a church in Paris. Notre Dame du Trail. Something, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, this guy, last Sunday, he went into it. And then again on Monday. And he wrote a on, with a black marker on the on pillars of the church. He wrote, "Submit to Allah, infidels. Prayer five times a day. Bastard Jesus, only one God, Allah. Uh, big Babylon destroyed Satan, the church. The church here we are burning. The first part, the last prophet Muhammad, the head cut off from those who exceed." I will make war on you, Christian world. We Muslims, we, we cannot accept this whore of religion. Go to hell. Satan burns. I do have to point out for everyone who's thinking, wow, this guy sounds like an idiot. I mean, keep in mind, this guy is a University of Paris scholar compared to his prophet. So don't condemn him. <laughs> I, I do want to point out one thing, though. The guy said, bastard Jesus, one God, Allah. Uh, somebody earlier said to me, well, that means he wasn't really a Muslim because Muslims would never talk about their beloved. Wrong. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. I get, I get messages from, I could guys, I could start screenshotting them. I get messages from Muslims all the time. Say Jesus is gay. you Jesus is gay. Ho, ho, ho. And it's just, it's just endless. And, and keep in mind, these are the guys, these are the same guys who will lie about anyone in the Bible in a heartbeat. If it's somehow in their mind linked to defending Muhammad. So these are the same guys who will say that Abraham sent his servant <clears throat> to get a three-year-old bride for Isaac. Complete nonsense, according to the text, but they'll say that. So Abraham, he's a pedophile. Isaac's a pedophile. Everyone's pedo. They'll just, yeah, so no, they, they don't respect the people they claim to respect. They respect one guy, Muhammad. Everyone else is under the bus. That's it. Also in France, we have, oh, I, got, I know I have her picture. I know I got it. Here she is. Severine. Uh, this is a French name, David. That, the, that's the defense attorney there. Severine Leroux. L-H-E-U-R-E-U-X. Severine. In French, that's pronounced fin, 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 I hear. Exactly. So Severine Leroux whatever uh she's the defense attorney 
for this chap named Mukhtar B. They didn't give his, uh, his last name. He's from Morocco, although he was born in Algeria. And he was arrested by the cops for shoplifting. And he, when he was arrested, he said, Allahu Akbar, I'm going to blow you all up, you infidels. Mm -hmm. And so he's being charged with justifying or glorifying terrorism, which is a crime in France. Uh, actually, they call it apology not for terrorism, as in ap apologetics. Yeah, you said crime in France. Not for long, mm -hmm. though, Robert. No, not for long, but it is for the moment. And so, so, so I think, I think, uh, I think it's basically there. There's this, uh, there's this rule in law that you can't charge someone with something that was made a law after they already did it. So if I'm doing something today and tomorrow it becomes uh, against the law, you can't charge me for it after, you know, af for something I did before it became a law. That's but right. in France, in France, what they'll want to do is say, hey, this isn't going to be a law five years from now. So why would we charge anyone for this now? Ah, that's a good point. But anyway, mm -hmm. they've done it. And so Severine Leroux, Leroux, whatever, she says that this is a choice of words. That is, Allahu Akbar, I'm going to blow you up, you infidels. This is a choice of words that plays into the hands of the extremists and is mm -hmm. regrettable. It's regrettable, she says. But then she goes on to say, I don't see what's terrorist about the fact that he said Allahu Akbar. And then the French paper, uh, La Depeche, very uh, uh, helpfully says Allahu Akbar means God is great. Does Allahu Akbar mean God is great, David? No, it means Allah is greater, greater than your God, greater than your system, greater than uh, anything that you uh, like or worship. And we're, uh, we're quite familiar with this being a standard slogan to shout when slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. Indeed. And so it is indeed uh, something that's designed to fulfill the Quranic imperative, strike terror in the enemies of Allah. Muhammad Atta, the 9-11 hijacker, actually wrote himself a letter that survived the, uh, it was in his luggage that got flagged. He was allowed on the plane and his luggage got stopped. So in the luggage, he had this letter pepping himself up that said, "Be remember to shout Allahu Akbar because it terrifies the infidels. Yep. Yeah. So Because you're good. You're good enough. You're smart enough. And people <laughs> like you. Just don't forget to shout Allahu Akbar. Don't forget, you idiot. You can do it. Because Severine says that ain't terrorism. But it seems to me that's exactly the whole point to strike terror. But that's not me making it up. That's Muhammad Atta and many others. All right, uh, over in uh, Paris, meanwhile, also in France, you have high security for the Paris Olympics. You know who's providing the security for the Paris Olympics, David? Mm, Israel. Uh, close, close. <laughs> it's Qatar. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know what's you know funny? You know, it's funny when you said it, when you said it, I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't Israel, but I was thinking those are the guys who are best equipped to defend against constant terrorist attacks and so on. And so if you really wanted security, that would, that would make most sense, but come on, this is France. They're not, they're going to do what makes least sense. And yep. then, uh, <laughs> so there is a Qatari police vehicle at the Eiffel tower and there are Qatari police all over Paris. Uh, apparently they're, uh, this Muslim Brotherhood supporting nation, they're going to stop the jihadis. But certainly uh, it's a, a, a remarkable precedent has been set because it was just a few years ago the French had multiple, m many, many uh, troops in Africa fighting against jihadis in Niger, in Mali, elsewhere, and they just gave up not long ago, withdrew them all, and now you have jihad-supporting nations going to France to protect the, the French. It's an interesting sign of how things are going. Uh, but yeah, 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 I would, uh, I'd probably go with ISIS uh, to, to protect, to protect people there. Uh, you, you know what they actually should do, like seriously here, because they're not going to do anything that ha that involves common sense. But uh, something that could work, find out 
the terrorist group that is most likely to attack the Olympics and get a different Islamic terrorist group that hates that terrorist group. Because you know how the terrorist groups always uh, yeah. slaughtering and killing each other? Get the terrorist group that is opposed to that mm -hmm. terrorist group and say, hey, we want you because those guys are going to be attacking. We know you hate those guys. If you want to kill some of those guys, now's your now's your chance. That'd be that'd be the only way they pull this off. That's a great idea. You know that really, if they're worried about ISIS at the Olympics, they should have gotten Iran to provide security, and then you got Shiites fighting Sunnis. It, it would be perfect. Or uh, better yet, better yet, they could have like a small little a small little army from each terrorist group. And then when they find out who's attacking, they're like, oh, it's ISIS. Okay, bring in bring in the Shias. And then they come in there. Or if it's this group, okay, now get these get these terrorists who hate them and so on. Be like, that, that's your only chance. Yep. But they do have ISIS. They just uh, arrested two ISIS suicide bombers who were plotting to uh, uh, blow up the Paris Olympics. And they were arrested, but... Uh, just, I believe it was just yesterday. Let me make sure here. Today is Wednesday the 17th. This was actually uh, two days ago, the 15th. Uh, CNN reported that a French soldier who was part of the anti-terrorism force was stabbed in, in Paris. So uh, I don't know how effective these uh, French are going to be, even with their Qatari friends. Well, hang, hang on, Robert. To be fair... Uh, this guy did get stabbed by a Muslim shouting Allahu Akbar, someone who had previously been convicted of murder and was somehow out. But I saw right after it was released that police, fortunately, have ruled out terrorism as a motivation. So nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's getting psychiatric care. So everything's mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, because anyone, anyone who reads the Muslim sources and concludes that they have to wage jihad must be insane, since it's so clearly and obviously a religion of peace. Indeed. Quite so. There's just no doubt about it whatsoever. All right, so uh, the contrast is clear. We have a series of stories from France of Muslims being violent, jihad being waged, people being attacked. We have a series of stories from Nigeria one from Algeria, one from Somalia, in which exactly the same thing is happening. It's like it's you, everywhere. Isn't that weird? You would think, though, you know, with all the talk about Islamophobia, that we would talk about jihad in Africa, fair enough. But then you go to Europe, you would think you would have all sorts of stories of Muslims being persecuted. Now, of course, that should not be happening, but it is not happening. And what's odd is that it seems to be the Christians and the non-Muslims being attacked everywhere. Yeah, it's really, really, really weird. And I just have to say it again for the 487,000th time. Guys, this is the difference to point out. This is the difference to point out when uh, someone goes, oh, you look, these uh, these guys are slaughtering people in the name of Allah. And then some idiot goes, oh, but all religions have their extremists. Look at Westboro Baptist Church or something else. Uh, guys, again, once again, when you have some weird church that comes out of nowhere you don't see people around the world getting the exact same idea why because it's not actually coming from it's not actually coming from the bible if it were then you'd see everyone getting the same idea around the world and you don't see when some weird church with weird beliefs pops up you don't see people from around the christians from around the world all flooding to that area to join the movement and so on that's what you find in is in islam wherever islam goes there's always this there's always this portion that are calling for jihad and calling for the violent subjugation of the world they somehow all get the exact same idea and when you have an organization like isis rise up and say hey we're the new caliphate suddenly you get muslims flooding into the area from around the world they somehow had the exact same idea about what islam teaches as isis where'd they get the idea from that's the question. Where indeed? It's it's a great mystery. Yeah, that will never solve it. No, Here is uh, another mystery as to why this happened. And of course, the cops are searching for the motive. But uh, this is in Queens, New York. And outside a uh, Roman Catholic church in Queens. It is Holy Family Roman Catholic Church in Fresh Meadows. And they had a statue three statues outside the church. You can see Mary 
Over here is Joseph on the right, and then the child Jesus in the middle. And uh, what happened was that uh, just a few days ago, a man named Jamshaid Chowdhury, who is a taxi driver, pulled up in front of the church at 5.30 a.m. And uh, the New York Post says he calmly crossed the street before removing a shoe and charging toward white marble statues of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. The taxi driver swatted the heads of Mary and Joseph. This was all caught on surveillance video, you see. Swatted the heads of Mary and Joseph with his shoe, then turned his attention to Jesus and hacked at the statue's head until it went spinning to the ground. Then he spit on the statue and calmly walked off, shoe still in hand. Jamshaid Chowdhury. Jamshaid, by the way, David, I see somebody in the uh, comment section saying Chowdhury is not a Muslim surname. That's actually not oh, oh, like, true. Yeah, like oh, like Anjum, like Anjum Chowdhury, the biggest Islamist of our time? Yes, exactly. So uh, that's obviously false, but it's also uh, worth noting that Jamshaid is a Persian name that is common among Muslims in Central and South Asia. So anyway, what I wanted to ask you is, what on earth is going on here with this guy being so calm about this? The New York Post says that he uh, went into this twisted on-camera tantrum, but then their own description contradicts themselves. They contradict themselves because they say he was calm before and calm after. So why is he calmly doing this weird thing of beheading a statue well if you have a problem with uh images images of uh prophets or so on or if you think christians are over there worshiping this thing why not uh why not go smash it exactly exactly this is something that it uh contradicts islam in many ways and here again of course we get people saying now why would you behead the jesus statue when they revere jesus as a prophet well in the first place they hate statues no representation of the human form is allowed. Also, the statue is obviously in a Christian context. He, it is a manifestation of belief in the divinity of Christ. The Christ is the Son of God. Christ as incarnate. All these things that are rejected in Islam. Yeah, and it's just uh, it's amazing because it's always always the same thing. Uh, how much Muslim outrage do you have? How much Muslim outrage do you see? when someone uh, does something in a church, desecrates a church, burns a church, attack, you know, smashes a statue, whatever, uh, desecrates Christian or Jewish graves. How much, how much Muslim outrage do you see? None. And yet these are the same guys who demand we do nothing but show the utmost respect and reverence for their prophets and their book. And when we don't, they complain, oh, but when when do Muslims ever do anything to your religious symbols? How about all day, every day around the world? You just don't pay attention to it because you don't care. There you go. All right. Uh, plenty more jihad here. Let's see. We did uh, this. We did that. Oh, speaking of statues, we had, of course, the uh, on frank statue in amsterdam that was uh painted on the base of the statue you see there painted gaza underneath now what does anne frank have to do with gaza uh, this is obviously Nothing. just the targeting of jews in general yeah and that's uh that's what really comes out um and you know as well as I, when they're talking, when they're speaking in Arabic, it's all Jews, 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 Jews. Mm -hmm. That's what you find in the Muslim sources. Jews, Jews, Jews. It's not. Um, it's not the hour will not come until the Muslims fight the Zionists and the Zionists are hiding behind rocks and trees. It's just Jews. The Jews are hiding. The Jews are the targets. But when they're speaking in front of a Western audience or to Western journalists, it's no, we have no problem with Jews. It's just with the Zionists. Exactly. And yet you see, you see what they actually think. They keep showing their true colors. 
the uh, Western journalists always fall for it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're stupid. Because they're stupid. Yep. All right, uh, 1972 Munich Olympics, David. I don't know if you were watching. I was 10 years old. I was watching. And, uh, which, was which year? Which year? 19, 1972. Okay. So I, 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 wasn't, might have I, wasn't, I wasn't born for four years, so. Oh, uh, well. Anyway, the, the Munich Olympics in 1972, there were Palestinian jihadis who went and murdered members of the Israeli Olympic team. And I mention it now, all these years later, this is a very famous photograph of one of the killers. And uh, he's there at the Olympic uh, uh, village where the Olympic athletes were staying. And he, uh, they killed a lot of Israelis, as I said. In any case, there was going to be in Paris at the Olympics this year, a memorial ceremony honoring the Olympic athletes who were murdered at that time. Uh, but it was moved because of fears that it would be targeted by Islamic jihadis. So the memorial for the Olympic athletes killed by Islamic jihadis is going to be held in secret for fear mm. of Islamic jihadis. That's good. That's good. That's wise. It's if you're just, a coward. Uh, yeah, it indicates the. Advanced... If you're a coward, who's? Yeah. Oh, just saying. If you're if you're a coward who's constantly trying to appease a terrorist, then yeah, it's a good move. Indeed, and that's what we got. That's what the mm -hmm. world is awash with these days. Speaking of which, speaking of appeasement and denial, uh, let me get this guy, uh, Zaniar Matapur. There he is. This is Zaniar Matapur. And Zaniar Matapur is from Iran. And he uh, lives in Norway. And in 2022, he went to a gay festival in Oslo. And he uh, killed two people and wounded nine at a gay bar, the London pub in Oslo. Mm -hmm. And when you start when you started that story, Robert, I thought this was going in a very different direction. But but go ahead. Well, there actually, it is going in a different direction from uh, from what you might expect because this is not really about the murders, which took place in 2022. But he was found guilty of terrorism this past week, and I thought it was amazing that the AP story, the Associated Press, headlined its story. Iranian-born Norwegian man found guilty in 2022 Oslo LGBT plus festival attack. So this is the Iranian-born Norwegian. Looks Norwegian question. to me. Yes, he's clearly quite Norwegian. I expect him to uh, start singing songs from The Sound of Music. I, no, that's Austrian, isn't it? But it's all blondes. Anyway, uh... This is just more of this denial and obfuscation that they call this guy Norwegian, which, you know, that's like calling, if, if I happen to be standing in the garage calling me an automobile, it's, it's, he's in Norway, but he's not Norwegian. And not only that, but Zaniar Matapur would not even say that he's Norwegian. Because I would lay odds, I'd bet you money right now, David, that he considers himself to be a citizen of the Ummah the global Islamic community, and that's not a Norwegian at all. But the one, what's the thing they want to avoid saying that he is? Uh, Muslim. Precisely. And so any other descriptor will do. Yeah, when you said this guy was going to a gay bar, I thought we were going to end up with stories that, uh, like the ones I've been reading in the Muslim sources about, uh, you've seen them, you've seen them, Robert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of them. It's interesting because it's in Sunni and Shia sources about Muhammad and uh, Diha al Kalbi. But Diha al Kalbi was so handsome that when he when he arrived in town, all the women of the town would run out to look gaze upon Diha al Kalbi. How hot this guy was! He probably and, looked like Zaniar Matapur. Yep, looked exactly like him. Mm -hmm. And so you've got all these all these interesting sources where Muhammad. 
uh, is with Dia in a private meeting and he's behind a curtain. And when Dia would come over, he would go behind the curtain and so on. And then when people would uh, would see him uh, leaving from behind the curtain with Dia or people would see him in the house with Dia, he would say, hey, no, 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 that's the angel Gabriel. Just he, he looks exactly like Dia. They're like, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? I mean, can you imagine anyone else doing this? Like, uh, honey, who is that? Who is that woman sneaking outside the window? Oh, it's an angel, dear. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. It's like, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? And like besides the, the, the besides dumbest that, explanation, she breastfed me, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all good. Yeah. All right. You know. You... Oh man. All right. Let's get hold of ourselves here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got University of Washington in the United States, and we have, what's her name, Isha Hussein. I know I got Isha Hussein here somewhere. Uh, here she is. There is Isha Hussein, and she went to the University of Washington, and then she reported that she had a terrible time of it. She said, uh, this is what she said, my roommate noticed I was a black Muslim and started making comments such as, my family and I don't like black people. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure somebody said that. Uh, that's my why my religion is better than yours. Yeah, yeah, she said that too. And Muslims are suicide bombers. Not only that, she said that her roommate, who was Jewish, would pull a knife on her while praying. I think that happened too. Uh, mm -hmm. in Sounds case, very believable. She complained to the university and complained that they were not taking her uh, concerns seriously. She wrote on her uh, Instagram, as a black Muslim woman, the University of Washington Housing and Food Services failed to protect me on the multiple occasions described. There was a huge outcry at the University of Washington, justice for Isha Hussein rally held by the Somali Student Association. They got a nice. Somali Student Association at the University of Washington. However, they got a third roommate, David. It's not just Isha and the Jewish girl. And the third roommate said she did not witness any threats of open hostility towards the victim from the suspect. The police were not able to verify a single instance of all this harassment. Hmm. Weird. I mean, with with all sorts of like recording devices and anyone can just pull out a phone and record something or leave it recording audio. I mean, it seems like you would have had some common sense if this this all this ongoing persecution. You'd think that the other roommate would have witnessed some of it or, you know, uh, Isha would have had the common sense to you know, record a little bit of it. You know, just leave a leave a little phone recording, something like that. It's weird. Yeah. You'd think, you know, phones are everywhere. Videos all over the place. Uh, multiple videos of the Trump shooter from Saturday night all over the place, more coming out all the time, of him walking around the grounds, casing the joint, etc., getting ready. And yet there's nothing, nothing on this. Reminds me And, and of, by the uh, way, yeah. by the way, oh, oh, go ahead. Well, rem Except remember reminds... that girl from a few years back, Yasmin Sawaid, who said that she was on the New York subway and some uh, oh, yeah. guys with MAGA hats came and pulled off her hijab and nobody came to help her and they were abusing her in the middle of this crowded subway train no video there either oddly enough mm -hmm. yeah um it, this is another one where when you started the story i thought it was going in a different direction because i've heard so many times over the years about the racism in the msa the muslim student association how they treat black muslims very differently from the way they treat uh they treat uh, Arab Muslims and so on. So I thought, I thought when you're talking about a roommate, I thought it was going to be, no, she had an Arab uh, Muslim uh, roommate who was making fun of her for being black. But nope, sounds like it totally made up. Totally made up. All right. Meanwhile, while all these things are going on, we can be assured, David, that our uh, intelligence and law enforcement apparatus is... Uh, on the job. And so this is uh, Fort Liberty, which used to be called Fort Bragg, after the Confederate General Braxton Bragg, in an effort to reconcile the uh, factions of the Civil War and heal the wounds of the nation. But now, of course, we're beyond all that. 
so it's no longer Fort Bragg. But in any case, they did a, uh, uh, had a slide presentation recently about terrorist groups. Now, what do you notice about these terrorist groups? Uh, can't see them. I have a little little thing. Uh, my screen is small here. I got gotcha. you. Well, I'll uh, I'll read it out then. The terrorist groups. It says it's it's a it's a power, part of a PowerPoint presentation, and the heading is terrorist groups. But there's not ISIS or Al Qaeda or Al Shabaab or Boko Haram, nothing like that. What we got instead, it says anti-abortion, right to life, and Operation Rescue, pro-life. Oppose Roe, v, oppose Roe versus Wade, types of advocacy, demonstrations and protests, etc., etc., etc. It's got the National Right to Life logo, Operation Rescue logo, etc. Those are the hmm. terrorist groups that well, the they're the U.S. They're, military. Yep, they're the, the ones we need to be most worried about. Not the ones that are going to slaughter us in the name of Allah. Those are our friends. Indeed, indeed. Meanwhile, we have the southern border. Or what used to be known as the southern border of the United States. <laughs> There's no border, Robert. Come on. Indeed, it's a it's a passe idea to have a border. It's all it's what it's one world, Robert. We're one big world. Come on. But a record number of of uh, people from Tajikistan have crossed the southern border in the last year, and hundreds were let in. Many of them were already on the terror watch list, and they were released into the United States. But the heat, the negative publicity got so bad about this that the uh, Biden administration has now halted the release of Tajik migrants into the United States. It's pretty Islamophobic. Yeah, I think that's terrible. It's just the Islamophobia is off the charts. Just imagine um, these terrorists coming, these terrorists coming to the U.S. because, you know, they, they, they want to start a new life, get a fresh start, work hard and so on. And then the uh, Biden administration ruins it, derails the whole jihad train. The Islamophobia is just, I'm speechless. David, meanwhile, we have other outrages. In the UK, you might have seen this video. These were pro-Hamas demonstrators in UK, and uh, the they are complaining that male police officers touched a Muslim disabled trans person of color with <laughs> that's the last person on the planet you want to touch because that's that's every box that's every box checked that's every possible box of someone that you don't want to that you'll get in trouble for touching yeah right there a muslim disabled trans person of color was touched without uh uh i don't know what to say his her its consent so uh these the people making the video were outraged uh, that person that person's pronouns are Allahu and Akbar. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, we have the new Lord Chancellor and Secretary of State for Justice in Britain. And this is the new Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, and the new Lord Chancellor and Secretary of State for Justice, Shabana Mahmood, who, of course, is a uh, former BDS activist, a free Palestine activist, what could possibly go wrong, David? What do you think? That's uh, no, nothing. 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 That's multicultural. Meanwhile, in Germany, we had a terrible story out of uh, the Saarland, where a uh, Syrian, a Muslim migrant from Syria, was walking along, minding his own business, and he said that a native German set his German shepherd upon him to attack him. And so this became a uh, big hate crime story. Lots of stories about Islamophobia, racism, xenophobia, hatred. You can fill in all the blanks. We've seen it all before. It's an epidemic. It's a pandemic. But what do you think, David? This did not happen. Police investigated. They have found nothing. And they believe now that the Syrian Muslim migrant faked the hate crime. Islam is the Jussie Smollett of uh, religions, apparently. Well, you got victimhood status, and the problem is you never have any victimhood, and so you keep trying to ha you keep having to try to shore it up. Uh, you got so they make up these stories for hate crimes 
when there are no hate crimes. And speaking of made-up stories, let's segue back to Britain for this fellow Adam Loxley. There's Adam. Adam Loxley, also known as Omar Abdullah Bal. And he, his brother, Hassan Bal, asked him to pick up a thousand pounds, that is not weightlifting, but money, a thousand pounds in cash, earmarked for ISIS. And so Omar Abdullah Bal, Adam Loxley, went to pick it up. There he is. And uh, he found that it was actually a map of London that a reporter had planted with his brother. And the whole thing was a sting. And so <laughs> he said, he didn't know, he said. He said he did not realize that his brother was raising money for ISIS. I believed that the money was going to a charitable cause. Could it be, David, that he's telling the truth that he, uh, that he actually, it, or could it be, let me ask this, that it was actually going to ISIS, but he also thinks it was for a charitable cause? Yeah, I mean, if, you're, uh, if you have the right mindset, ISIS is a charitable cause. That's right. And certainly old Adam Loxley, a.k.a. O, AKA Omar Abdullah Bal, who accidentally collected money for ISIS, he <laughs> is somebody of the right mindset. And he is also in the news this week because he refused to, he's a plumber, and he refuses to take work for, from Zionists. Yeah, like uh, <clears throat> back when you had uh, like CARE and their unindicted co-conspirator status and so on for this Holy Land um, mm -hmm. uh, charitable giving scheme, but it was going to, it was funding terrorism. I mean, they all thought that was, that was a charitable cause and it's going straight to terrorists. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, Islamic, as a matter of fact, the Islamic law regarding uh, almsgiving, zakat, is that it's permissible to give it to jihad. As a matter of fact, you are obligated, if you, if mm -hmm. possible, to give some of it to jihad. But anything that's zakat eligible is good enough. But giving that's, it that's to straight jihad out of the Quran. That's yes, straight out of the Quran too. Precisely. So it's a meritorious act. Uh, hey, David, we got a new religion just dropped. The Ahmadi religion of peace and light. Have you heard of these guys? It's not the Ahmadi. It's, it's not, not the regular Ahmadis? No, these are out of Egypt. Oh, okay. Cool. And uh, I'll read you what Bitter Winter, which is a site that tracks religious persecution. Bitter Winter says, The Ahmadi religion of peace and light uh, is a Shia derivative new religious movement. Not to be confused with the Sunni derivative Ahmadiyya community that is in Pakistan. Yeah, change your name, guys. You're only going to confuse people. Yes, but, well, they call, the Bitter Winter calls it Aropal, which uh, is the acronym, Ahmadi Religion of Peace and Light. But it makes, it just makes me think of R-O-F-L rolling on the floor laughing. Uh, but anyway, Aropal originated with the teachings in Iraq of Ahmed, Ahmad al-Hassan, whom devotees regard as the Yamani, a John the Baptist-like character who paved the way for the appearance of the Imam al-Mahdi, the eschatological figure who will restore a divine just state in the end times. The Aropal identifies the Qaim, the riser of the family of Muhammad, the end times character who leads the actual rise for Imam Mahdi, from the, for the establishment of the divine just state. And with Abdullah Hashem Abba as Sadiq, a college educated American citizen with an Egyptian father and an American mother. He's the second in a list of 12 Mahdi's, Ahmad al Hassan being the first. And the Europa believes he's mentioned in Muhammad's will, which is a Shiite document. Yeah, I'm a. Uh... I believe I'm also mentioned in Muhammad's uh, will, but uh, for, sadly, sadly, it was corrupted by these guys. These guys corrupted it, uh, tried to write me out of it. But uh, no, Muhammad said, hey, eventually a guy, David Wood, will come and, uh, and Robert Spencer as well. And uh, you need to listen to whatever they say. And I say, shut it down, guys. Shut it all down. I thought a tame sheep had eaten the part where I was mentioned in Muhammad's will. Yeah, that happened. 
Anyway, you know, uh, Uthman burned all the parts that I was in. Yes, well, that guy, he was the worst Quran desecrator ever. That guy. <laughs> Oh, if I could, if I could build a time machine powered by 1.21 gigawatts of Islamophobia and go back and straighten that out. <laughs> anyway, I wrote, I have brought up the Ahmadi religion of peace and light because, as you might expect, they are being persecuted by the Sunnis in Egypt. Because yeah, the religion of the uh, religion of death and destruction. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, the Islamic religion of death and destruction. And it is persecuting the Ahmadi religion of peace and light. Any religion of peace and light is going to get persecuted by these guys. But uh, God willing, we're going to be here next week to track more jihad, to let you know about these things that the establishment media dares not tell you, so that you can be informed, informed and aware. Ladies and gentlemen, till then, pray, hope, and don't worry. <laughs>